waking up with... <laughs> Shivraj Prashad, your host on Good, Good Morning, Morning Grammar. Grammar. Now it's time for... Words on Wednesday with Preeti Singh. In Bollywood movies, the police are always on their way or arrive only after the action is over. But wait, is it the police are on their way or is it the police is on its way? This is one that a lot of people have asked me about. What is the police here? Well, it is a collective noun and as such it would mostly take is. But there are a few ways that you can express collective nouns. And that is where the confusion mostly occurs. The police, interestingly enough, are in a special category of their own because they have no singular noun form. So, the police are always on their way while countless atrocities are being visited upon the good guys in Bollywood movies. The army and navy, on the other hand, fall within that collective noun rule of thumb and always take is, unless in their plural form. For example, the armies of the gods. But that's used quite rarely. As you've heard in this podcast before, sentences have to include a subject, which is the noun, and a verb to be complete. Some sentences, however, may still confuse you. So, when deciding whether to use is or are, it is important to pay attention to the subject and not the verb which will decide what we use. Whether we use is, are, hers, his, its, their, etc. Depending on whether it is a single, plural or collective noun. Take these following sentences for comparison. The groceries are still in the car. Here it is easy to know that we need to use are. But if we were to say the bag of groceries is still in the car. Then the bag of groceries becomes the subject of the sentence and though it refers to a collective, it is after all a single bag. Hence, we have to use is here. Another simple example but the other way around. The meat is in the car versus the bags of meat are in the car. If a sentence mentions a number of individuals, then that subject would take a plural verb, even if it is a collective noun. For example, the army has been mobilized and called out to maintain law and order, versus that group of children is being very noisy, with the emphasis on a single group. Then there are mass nouns, like hair, water, sand. For example, water is a precious and finite resource, or the sand is hot enough to roast chestnuts in. Or, my hair is very dry. Last but definitely important is the distinction between the use of there is and there are. The rule of thumb here is to note what comes after these two words. For example again, there is food in the fridge versus there are drinks in the fridge. Or the extremely horrifying, there is a hair in my soup. Versus the supremely satisfying, there are a variety of meats in my soup. To wrap up, there are too many examples in this podcast. Versus, there is only one podcast that cares enough about your daily dose of good grammar. Until next week then, have a good one. It's easy to connect with me on Twitter or Instagram. My handle is the same on both. Truth About Nobody. That's T-R-U-T-H-A-B-T-N-O-B-O-D-Y. I also have a podcast called The Good Comms Podcast with Preeti Singh in which I share bite-sized nuggets to help you improve your verbal and non-verbal communication skills. I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn as well. Till then, see you next Wednesday for a word with me on Good Morning Grammar. I hope what you heard was useful, but we'd love to hear from you as well. You too can feature on any episode by sending in your requests or feedback. 
with a voice message on WhatsApp on plus nine one nine six two five four seven five double four two or via email at shivraj at brevis dot in. We'd be happy to read out your message here or even play it on an entire Friday special episode. Have a good day and stay tuned for another fresh episode of Good Morning Grammar.